Coming up next. I, I think that uh, definitely the longer hours working in the oil and gas sector was uh, obviously, you know, there was there was more earning potential there. But definitely I have, uh, for, for me anyway, uh, it's, it's become a little bit um, better quality of life, you know, more time at home with my family, uh, you know, less time working on weekends, that sort of thing. The Job Talk podcast shares stories from people who are passionate and love what they do in their careers. Through conversation, we explore their careers, past work experiences, and the education that got them to where they are now. We are putting together a Career Crisis Ultimate interview series. We are asking experts to give their best advice and guidance around work anxiety, career pressures, career goal setting, and ultimately career transformation. To learn more about this special interview series and get notified when it's available, please visit our webpage at thejobtalk.com slash help. Today's guest is Brandon Sandmeyer. Here's our job talk with an alternative energy specialist. Brandon, you are the perfect person to talk to because you made a change in your career. You went back to school and we'll get to that. But where did you go to high school and what were you doing after you graduated from grade 12? Yeah, so I started, uh, or sorry, I went to high school in small town Alberta, like like many people, and uh, started working as a small engine mechanic right after high school, and uh, spent some time doing that and got interested in 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 moving forward to the kind of the next step, which was working on more heavy equipment, and that led me down the road to uh, to go to Nate um, for a two year diploma program that was focused around heavy equipment. Uh, it's called Industrial Heavy Equipment Technology, and I, I believe it's still operating uh, to this day. Okay. So that got you into the oil and gas industry. Is, is that correct? Is that where you took those skills and that education? Yeah, that's right. So um, after my two years at Nate, I was hired by one of the uh, oil sand companies up in Fort McMurray, and they hired me to apprentice as a heavy-duty uh, technician. So I started... Yeah, I started my my apprenticeship route for the next uh, three years after graduating from Nate and became a journeyman, uh, heavy equipment technician. So in that during that time, I was working on all of the oil sand equipment, the the heavy hauler trucks, the support equipment, cranes. Uh, I got a pretty good uh, dose of variety up there, and uh, yeah, spent spent a few years after that actually working on some pipeline. Uh, equipment and then settled into working on mobile cranes for kind of the last half of that that portion of my career. Majority of it was was oil and gas based work, um, supporting different uh, mod yards that are that were around the city. Um, uh, and uh, we, we did do a bit of just basic construction as well with the equipment that I worked on, but but majority of it was was oil and gas support. Were you thinking that you were going to have a long career in that industry? Was that going to be it? That was going to be a 20 to 30 year career? Yeah, you know, that was that was kind of it. I, I, I most people told me, you know, when when I was in Fort McMurray that you're, you know, you need 20 years in and then you're set, you know, that's all you got to do. And I was not real thrilled over that. I, I decided that I spent my time up there and then I, I moved down to, to Edmonton and, and started working in the same field, but but closer to home. and. It, it was it was something that I, I didn't really know where it could lead. I, I expected that I would probably end up in, um, you know, a management role maybe at some point in time. But uh, those opportunities didn't present themselves because there was just so much work to to do, and um, I was spending a lot of time in a in a field service truck, uh, you know, working weekends, and it uh, it started taking over more of my life as as I. Uh, got married and decided to have kids. So I wanted to be home a little bit more. And uh, so that when I was around 30 years old, I kind of had a a, to- a moment where we considered changing careers. Uh, my wife and I kind of sat down and tried to figure out, you know, what else I could do. If there was anything else out there, it was kind of a good time to to make a choice. And how extensive was your research into make uh, other industries that you were going to look at to make a sw- switch to? Yeah, well, I think I focused for a couple months on different programs that were available. I, I kind of, I went pretty wide. I, I even looked at becoming, you know, a teacher at one point. Uh, I took, I took some courses at U of A for that and it didn't quite feel right. And then looked at more of what transferable skills I had. So the kinds of things that I was good at were, you know, electrical, um, hydraulics, um, 
you know, thermodynamics, uh, those kinds of things that you deal with on a day to day with, with repair work. And so I tried to see what those kind of skills would transfer to. And Nate always kept coming up on the radar because it, it it's kind of good at that. It has a lot of variety and it can, it can make use of the skills that you have in different industries. So I had looked at the construction engineering technology program, and then another one called alternative energy technology, which was was very new. Uh, this was in 2014 and it only had, I think three or four years of grads before that. So it was, it was quite new and it was kind of un, uh, yeah, it was kind of unknown as to what would happen after <laughs> coming out of it. So th- those were the, the two uh, primary ones that I looked at. Did you receive any negative feedback from some of your old oil and gas colleagues that you were, that you landed on entering alternative energy technology at Nate? Did anyone give you any static for that? Well, I think I think there was just more so like they were happy that I was deciding to make a, cho- a, a change, you know, because it's difficult and they understood that. And there wasn't really an industry to speak of at the time. N- nothing substantial, you know, like like we have today, uh, which is not a whole not many years down the road that we that we have a flourishing you know industry here. But but back then in 2014, you know, there was there was no real issue with working in the oil and gas industry. There was plenty of jobs and it was, it was quite lucrative for everyone who was working in it. Um, as long as you didn't mind putting your hours in. And I think that, that people who I worked with, they didn't see, you know, they didn't see it as a competing industry or, or that I was going down a wrong road. Uh, you know, everyone offered, uh, if it doesn't work out, you can always kind of come back and, you know, it's worth a shot kind of thing. Yeah. Right. But I, I never heard any flack from that, from that side of it, uh, at least not, not, uh, not, not that I was aware of anyway. Yeah. So alternative energy technology at Nate, what are the specific courses that you're taking when you go through that program? And I believe it's a two-year program, correct? It's a two-year program. I, I would say it's a three-year program that's uh, squeezed into two. But yeah. I think I think uh, there are lots of diploma programs like that where it's it's super intense for two years. But the courses that we were um, that we were given in that program kind of were more created to to create us a, uh, a generalist in yeah. alternative energy more so than a than somebody who's very specific. So uh, it would uh, we would have we had courses and training on on solar solar PV so electric and and thermal like for hot water. Um, and then geothermal, we also did wind and hydroelectricity. Uh, we did, um, energy management, which is kind of the the field that I'm working in right now, which is more the study of energy, uh, within use within buildings and, and, uh, management of of that, um, energy storage, uh, bioenergy. So like, uh, biofuels, um, ethanol, biodiesel, those kind of things we, we were you know, we actually made those products, which was kind of neat in, in the labs. Yeah. Um, and then hydrogen fuel cells, which is something that's kind of reared its head again. Many people are talking about hydrogen these days. And uh, yeah. and so, yeah, we were, those were kind of, that was the, the spread. And there's probably even more, but those were the I guess, main topics. And what were some of the backgrounds of some of your fellow students in that program? Did you find there was a lot of people that transitioned from other industries into it as well? Yeah, for the most part, it was a variety, but... I think that it was interesting to see people who had degrees behind them, like who had done a degree at the U of A just recently, but wanted some more, you know, specificity. Um, We had people that had uh, education degrees. We had uh, political science. We had some electricians who are transitioning. We had some engineers who were, um, you know, in between courses and wanted to, 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 you know, uh, sorry, in between years in their, in their schooling and wanted to take some, uh, some courses. So yeah. And we also had grads, uh, straight out of high school. So there was yeah. a lot of, a lot of diverse backgrounds, which, which made it interesting. And I think students were able to learn, you know, from each other too, not just from, from the instructors because of, because of the diversity. For sure. And when you graduate from the alternative energy technology from Nate, what kind of specific jobs can you apply for? Yeah, again, very diverse, but uh, I would say the most popular positions are within the solar energy field, energy management, and um, and uh, bioenergy. 
I would say, yeah. just from my experience and from people that I graduated with. I know that solar is usually the one that people come in hoping to work in, but um, uh, as, as I did, and, and, and it was something that I did work in for, for a period of time. And uh, now I've gravitated towards um, energy management. So the, the interesting part of it is that you can, you know, because you have such a diverse background, you don't necessarily need to stay in, you know, in one sector of, of the, uh, of renewables. There, there are things that you can easily strafe over because you understand, because as a grad, you, you kind of understand energy and are able to, you know, apply that to, to whatever, whatever comes at you. So I think that, I think that it's, um, yeah, mostly people think you're coming in and it's a solar program, but, but it's a very diverse program. And, uh, and there's there's lots of international students that come as well because there's not as many of these types of programs available throughout the world and i think that there's you know obviously this is a, a worldwide problem climate change and and the solutions um it, it's neat to see people coming to edmonton to go back home and, and apply these concepts to their own country yeah you can take everything that you learned and I guess, is it a diploma that you receive when you graduate from the program? It's a diploma. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can yeah. take this anywhere in the world. You can yeah, really. To- like it's, it's a unique program. Uh, you can also, I believe through Nate, you can do another uh, two years and, and get a, a bachelor in technology. I believe I can't remember exactly what the term is, but I know that there is another uh, program that you can, you can go through with Nate and, and, and get a degree actually through this. So. You just mentioned something, and uh, I know very little about alternative energy, but wind turbines and solar panels, is one better than the other? Now, I, I think that they're, they're very specific to uh, your resource, right? So, like, for example, I, I wouldn't, uh, if, if the company came to me today and said, I want to put up a wind turbine, you know, on your family farm here in, in northern Alberta around Edmonton, I'd show them the door because it, there's, there's the economics just aren't there. We don't have a lot of wind here in, in northern Alberta, but if you go to Pincher Creek, there's there's a there's a financial argument to be made there, and and hence why you see all of the turbines down in that area. The wind speed is so high that that there actually is a significant amount of electricity that can be harvested off of that. But likewise for sol- for solar, um, Alberta in general is a is a really great solar resource, but in the south. Further in the south, the resource is 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 better. This is why you see a lot of the large solar uh, projects that are going in in Alberta, utility scale projects are going in, you know, south of Bassano, down by Lethbridge. Uh, that whole area is is starting to become kind of the solar alley. And uh, yeah, so so I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I think they're they're both useful technologies. It's just applying them in the right way to get the maximum amount of, you know, emissions reduction and, and savings, uh, or, or revenue, I guess, depending on how you're looking at it. That's my one very specific question about some of the technology in, in your industry. Yeah, no, that's let's, good. <laughs> let's, let's talk about, uh, your position now and what are you doing in your day to day? Yeah. So now I work for uh, a local municipality and I'm, uh, uh, I guess the, my title is an energy specialist. Typically, these roles are called energy management uh, positions, where it's a role where where you are responsible for the energy consumption uh, of, of of a group of facilities. Commercial businesses have these as well, like uh, you know your WalMarts and Home Depots, and they they would all have an energy management uh, group or division as well, because energy is a significant portion of their uh, expenditure. So managing it uh, and managing their emissions as well, kind of is, is what the role is about. So uh, that that's what I'm in. That's what I've been doing for the last uh, about year and a half. Um, so I have another certification in energy auditing. So a certified energy auditor that's through an organization called uh, the AEE, uh, Association of Energy Engineers in the US. And it's, um, it, yeah, it, it, it's just accreditation that I was able to, to get on uh, energy auditing for commercial buildings. So being able to to go into a commercial building and assess how much energy it's using and then recommend measures that are going to reduce the energy consumption of the building over a time period and then estimating, doing the financial analysis to show, you know, the, the payback value of, of each individual uh, recommendation. What do you think you enjoy most about what you're doing right now? Uh, right now, I, I like the fact that 
there's a, a variety, I guess. I have I, I have a, a lot of desk time, I guess, doing analysis, uh, you know, updating reports or reporting, and then doing grant applications is a big part of my role as well. If there's grants available for doing building retrofits or uh, programs to help our residents save energy, these are things that I, I kind of uh, will take on in my day to day. But then I also do a fair amount of project management. So if there is a project that I deem you know, worthy to do, and it has a favorable payback, uh, for example, an LED lighting retrofit on a facility, then I, I uh, take on the role of, of hiring the, the contractor and then project managing it from start to finish. So uh, I enjoy kind of that there's, there's both, I get to get out of the office and do site visits and work with our facilities team to, to do testing on site, you know, measuring, measuring uh, energy use for different uh, equipment that we have and uh, yeah, interacting with contractors. So there's, there's lots of variety and that's that's kind of the the thing that I like the most. Are you surprised that in a relatively short period of time you've landed in the position that you're in? Yeah, absolutely. I, I had no expectations for the 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 course that I took because I, I really didn't know what was going to happen. My wife and I were fully, you know, ready to if we had to move to BC because they they seemed at the time to have more of a a, a burgeoning uh industry with, with regard to renewables, uh, we were going to do that, but thankfully we didn't, we didn't have to, we were able to stay here and I graduated in 2016. So it's, you know, it hasn't been a long time, I guess. Uh, and I was able to gather a whole bunch of different experience in that time because there was so much growth and, uh, kind of ended up where I am. And it's, yeah, it's, it's great to, to also see, you know, the growth of the industry, like, um, within within solar, when I when I was coming out of school, like the largest utility ish scale solar project that we had was a two megawatt project, you know, in uh, in southern Alberta, and now we have like a thousand times more than that installed in in Alberta to the order of of two gigawatts of 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 solar uh, and clean energy kind of in total, right? So uh, there's there's an amazing amount of investment going on, and uh, I I read recently that. It was like 3.75 billion is going to be input into Alberta's clean energy sector in, in by 2023. So, like the investment is there, uh, and this is not like government grant, you know, which is really neat. This is like private investment. Big banks are getting involved in it um, because Alberta's got such a great resource, and the way that the uh, the market works here, uh, they're able to to kind of to get involved, um, sign power purchase agreements so that they can build the asset produce uh, the energy and then re- offset, you know, their usage as a, as a corporation or, or whatever. Right. So there's uh, uh yeah, it's, it's an entirely new kind of industry that, that uh, is really targeted at offsetting carbon emissions. So it's, it's neat to see the growth and the amount of jobs. Um, I think the article said that there's something in the order of 4,500 jobs created by that, that investment. So very cool to see. And it's, it's, it's encouraging to know that kind of, lucked out and made made the right choice at the right time uh because it definitely wasn't like deep foresight it was it was it was definitely just uh um uh yeah l- l- luck that i was able to to kind of land on my feet at this time because um it had been a few years previous it may, may have been a little more difficult to to make a go at it right so the compensation between oil and gas and alternative energy do you think it's comparable or is it becoming comparable? It's difficult to say because it depends on what, you know, what a person was doing uh, before. Um, for, for me personally, it's it's comparable. Um, I, I think that uh, definitely the longer hours working in the oil and gas sector was uh, obviously, you know, there was there was more earning potential there. Um, but but definitely I have, uh, for, for me anyway, uh, it's, it's become a little bit um, better quality of life, you know, more time at home with my family, uh, you know, less time working on weekends, that sort of thing. So, uh, I I would say that it's comparable in that regard. And, you know, others may have different, uh, experiences because, you know, because they were in different roles, if they do transition, you know, it's hard to enter a new industry at the same kind of level you were maybe at a a long-term position with an oil and gas firm, but, but those are starting to, you know, emerge where, um, where, you know, companies are starting to get big enough that they, you know, they need managers, uh, that, that can handle the amount of staff that they have. And if, if you have that experience in an oil and gas sector job, you, you may be able to transition over to, you know, um, some of the companies that are starting to do, uh, do work in energy efficiency or, um, or, or renewables. 
work-life balance is better. I was going to ask you, and this might be a little bit out of sequence, but when you left your career in oil and gas, did you just have a feeling that you knew you had to make a change and you couldn't continue doing what you were doing? And then you, you made the switch? Yeah. Yeah. There was, <clears throat> there was a lot of contributing factors, I would say, <coughs> excuse me. But I think that the, the primary one was that, um, I, I want to just change for me, like a challenge is, is something that is important to keep me engaged with, with my career. And, uh, not, not that my you know previous role wasn't challenging, but learning new things, I guess, uh, and being challenged in that way is, is, is important to me. Um, and, uh, and th- going back to school was always something that I, I wanted to do. It was the big question mark was what, like what, what, uh, is, is, is the cause that, that I, I would like to spend, you know, two years, uh, learning about. And, and, uh, it was, it was something that, um, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting to, to have full-time work after I was you know fully, fully understanding that that might not be the case, but, um, thankful that it was. What are some of the challenges that you face in your day-to-day work? I think just overcoming the barriers of understanding, you know, the language that I speak in energy, it's, it's very technical depending on, on what I'm talking about, I can use interchangeable terms that, that are synonymous to me, but complete gibberish to other people. So I, I think simplifying the work that I do down to, uh, uh, an, an easy to understand summary is, is kind of what um, a lot of people need from me. And it's difficult for me to, to do that sometimes because I like to go into the details and, and find the, uh, you know, the nuance in, in what I'm trying to explain to people. But it's important to be able to simplify things and make it understandable. So I, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I face in, in my day to day. I guess also uh, just getting the typical things with project management where, you know, you're, you're following up with, with contractors and, and people not getting back to you in the time that you would like. And so it's, it's no different than any other project management uh, role in that way. But uh, yeah, I would say those are kind of the major hurdles. Uh, honestly, the, the, the role that I have currently, everyone that I work with is, is fantastic. They're all very supportive of what I do and, uh, and they're, you know, they're, they're happy to help in any way that they can and, and learn as well. So um so yeah, not not a whole not a not a heap of challenges because I think it's such a it's an area of, of interest for everybody right now and and tackling this problem is is kind of all of our responsibilities. So um and anyone who's who's here to help um I think they're 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 open to listening to. I I imagine your industry like technology is changing fast and often. What what do you see in our future regarding energy production and the consumption of that energy? Yeah, I think this twofold. I think what we have in Alberta anyway, I can speak from an Alberta context, is we have a largely, you know, centralized system, both natural gas and electricity. So speaking from, from, from that side of things, I think what you're going to see is more distributed energy. So where, where municipalities and smaller groups throughout the province are going to start uh, owning their own generation uh, and probably seeing some things like microgrids starting to show up on the map where you're you're you have a connection to the greater grid but you have your own grid uh you know set up within a region or an area and you produce your own electricity and you distribute it yourself and uh, maybe there's even like short-term storage uh, ba- larger battery storage systems brought in uh, i could see that in the future on the energy side like on the consumption side Every product that you buy today is, is getting, you know, an order of magnitude better in energy consumption uh, from your computers to your fridge to your any appliance that you buy, really. And, and I think that's something that will continue. But uh, I think that the next industry that's going to come is 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 a push for making housing close to net zero as possible. Right. So programs that are designed to help people reduce their energy consumption in their homes. Um, there's some coming out uh, in Alberta right now. It's a unique system uh, that's in other jurisdictions. It's called PACE, or it's called, uh, uh, which means property assisted clean energy. In Alberta, it's known as the Clean Energy Improvement Program. And what that does is it allows people who are looking to make upgrades to their home, insulation, new furnaces, you know, solar installation, it allows them to, to get those 
upgrades done and the cost of that gets uh, put on their properties tax roll. And then they're able to pay that back over time through their taxes. And it's not a personal debt. So interesting policy changes like that uh, have already happened. And I think in the future, most municipalities are going to try to have something like this available so that people can reasonably go forward with some, with some financial tools to, to actually address, you know, energy use in their homes and get closer to like a net zero home, hopefully in the future. And that, you know, bring the standard of our homes up because for so long we built homes so poorly and, and now uh, we're realizing that and the energy codes have changed. And so newer homes are again, in order to magnitude better, just like everything else. But uh, there's a lot of existing legacy homes that need to be upgraded and, and uh, it will be, yeah, kind of the next, the next frontier, I guess, uh, is upgrading our homes to, to, to uh, make them as efficient as possible. Do you have any advice that you could give to somebody that's about to enter the alternative energy technology program at Nates? And the advice would probably work for somebody going to any institute that's, that's offering a program like that. Yeah, I think that it's 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 a good idea if you're thinking about making a switch and you you have you know an inclination to uh, towards this industry. Uh, you're passionate about it. I was a little bit ignorant. I I didn't. I wasn't uh, an environmentalist. I would say or anything going in. Um, I, I learned a lot about climate change and about you know the effects it's having and the way and the mitigations that that are going that that, that exist. So if you, if you have, most people are more educated about it now than, than then. So I think that uh, if you do have that interest, I would jump in with both feet. Uh, there's, there's way more opportunity out there, even from an education standpoint right now. I know that uh, the U of A, um, I believe the University of Calgary, um, there's, there's other institutions that have programs around this as well, uh, not just Nate. So do your research and find something that, that works for you. Uh, I imagine, uh, you know, there's opportunity even to do it part-time, you know, not having to jump right in for two years like I did uh, and forgo a wage for a period of time. It's it's something that you could kind of work away at or, or, or you know, um, possibly even go and get your master's in. There's, there's definitely opportunities there. So yeah, I, I would say research uh, what's available and, and uh, you can make the switch slowly or you can make the switch fast like I did, but uh, it's definitely rewarding. Uh, I found it super rewarding and I know that I'll have, you know, a career right till, till retirement in this, in this space. And I'm uh, yeah, pretty happy with my choice that I've made. Well, congratulations on making that decision. A lot of people are maybe are too scared to do it, but you did it and I wish you success moving on and thank you for coming on the podcast today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anytime. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Job Talk podcast. For more information, please visit us at thejobtalk.com. Our podcast music was created by our friend Mike Malone in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada.